The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump down to the adjustable gradient. And I might even come back and adjust color once I do this. Let's go down here. It hasn't been used in this, but one of the things that I like to do with these kinds of images is to use this filter. Now what I'm going to do with the top selected is I'm going to increase the exposure a lot so that we can see what the top and bottom are affecting. I'm going to click on the bottom now and I'm going to reduce that exposure down quite a lot. And then I'm going to click on set orientation and I'm going to drag this around now and because I've set that extreme and the exposure for both top and bottom it helps me to get a better understanding of where that filter is going to be applied. And I'm going to start right there. Now notice if I drag in this bottom line how that drags the filter down further and I'm liking that. Okay so now back to the adjustable gradient. I'm going to reset the exposure by double clicking on the name. Go to top, reset that, and we're back to where we started from. So on the top, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if reducing the highlights helps reduce the brightness up there without detracting from it. And I could also take a look at what reducing exposure will do, but I don't want to do too much. We could see if contrast helps any. And now let's go to bottom and let's again start with reducing exposure. I'm going to use the keyboard keys right now. See what that does. Let's come down to shadow. Again, I'm going to use keyboard keys. I've got my mouse over it. Bring up the shadows a little bit. Let's see what highlights does. We reduce highlights a lot in here. Okay, so that's the bottom. Let's go back up to the top. Do we want to increase the vibrance? Yeah, let's increase the vibrance a little bit, not too much. Not so it's heavy handed, but just a little bit more push there. And I'm happy with that. Oh, let's take a look on the bottom if we increase contrast slightly. Maybe just a touch. What happens if we play with vibrance? If I push it down a bit, turn it off, turn it back on, and that's what we've done there. Now, let's go back up to the HDR Enhance. So the thing I'm going to play with here is the smart structure. This HDR smart structure allows me to add detail without having to worry about adding noise and artifacts to the image, which is a very cool thing. So let's see what happens if we push this all the way over to the right, add a lot of this detail, and see what happens. Let's just max it out, just for fun. And that's a bit too much. Let's slide that back to about here and see what that looks like. Now the other thing we can do is we can play with microstructure. Microstructure is looking at the very fine details. We really have to be careful with this. If we do too much of this, it's going to add noise to it. So let's slide this over. You may not be able to see it on your screen, but that is way, way too much. Let's bring that back down to about here. Now the next thing to look at is LUT mapping. Now we haven't talked about LUTs, but LUTs are lookup tables that will apply a look. There are a few articles on LUTs that I've written. You can find those in photofocus.com under Chris Anson if you're interested in finding out more. The important thing here is that this LUT was applied as part of this look. And so we can control how much is applied. So let's go to the amount slider. And if I drag this over all the way to the right, applied at full settings of 200, that's way too much. Let's slide that back though and see what happens if we hit it about there. Now let's turn it off and then back on. And that's still a little more than I want. So let's slide it down and let's turn it off and then back on. Now on to image radiance. This gives that sort of glow look to images. And I'm happy with the settings, although I want to turn down the amount. So let's take a look at turning this down to about here. Now this is with it off, and this is with it on. So again, a subtle shift in the image, but I like the look of it. It adds a little bit of softness to it. 
The next thing is the polarizing filter. Let's turn this off first so you can see its impact. This is with it off, and that's with it on. I'm going to leave it at the current setting. I don't really want to apply anymore. Let's take a look at HDR details boost. I like the amount of this. It's a subtle enhancement to the image. Let me turn it off and back on. And you may not be able to see that in the video, but it is a subtle shift and I like the enhancement of the image. Now let's go down to the tone curve. So here's with the tone curve off. It's a very subtle shift, but I like what it's doing. And we're going to leave that alone. Now let's come down to HSL. And in here, we're going to take a look at this blue in the sky. And we're going to come down to blue. And let's take a look at the hue first. Let's go ahead and drag this to the right and left until we find the, the hue of blue that we want. I like that. Let's go to the saturation level and see what happens when we increase the saturation. And now let's go to luminance for the blue. And let's see what happens when we reduce the brightness of it. So that's our HSL. The last thing we're going to play with is the vignette. First, let's turn it off and on. So this is off. And this is back on. I'm going to set a different amount of vignette on this image. With the amount set to minus 100, as I change the size, it's easy to see what's going on and where the vignette is being applied. We can also affect the roundness of the image. This will push it a little more to the corners. We can feather it. Feathering it determines how hard the edge is. I like a fair amount of feather. And I'm not going to set inner brightness until we reset the amount. So let's back the amount off to about there. Do we need any more inner brightness? I don't think we do. Let's turn it off and then back on. It subtly draws the eye into the center of the image. So here's an example of taking three images shot with my drone bracketed, combining them together and processing them in Aurora HDR 2019. And it handled combining and processing the images very well. This is Chris Hansen. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video and I hope it was helpful.